Hi there, I'm Peter Cargill. Um, before you come here, you should have been to the blog and reading about uninterruptible power supplies for the likes of the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's a blog entry uh, will come up on the screen here. And um, so this is just a development of that because I thought it would be easier to show a video than to um, write it all down with photographs and all the rest of it. So this is a work in progress. What you're looking at is a Raspberry Pi and don't take that literally that could be any kind of small microprocessor nano whatever going to it are three wires plus and ground and a signal uh, a warning signal to tell the Pi if that signal goes low to gracefully shut down that's it that can be done in a number of ways, a little bit of Python. I've got a little, tiny little piece of code in um, Node Red. In fact, it's not even code, just two nodes. Um, but it's about four lines of code in Python or whatever, depending on the device you're using. All right. So power and ground and signal. Uh, that's just going to need an connector. The board, as you can see, is currently off. This is a breadboard, which I'll refer to as the dog's breakfast. Uh, you won't see many traditional components here other than these two boards, mainly because the purpose of doing this was to show just how cheaply you can um, you can do an uninterruptible power supply and do the job properly. There are one or two boards out there which are pretty good. None of those are cheap. Some of the boards that are cheap are very nice, but when you actually get down to it, as you'll see if you go to the blog, um, they don't really do everything you need in a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. So let's get on with this. On the left, I've got a lithium battery. I would be using something like one of these, but I don't have a holder for it. I've got one on order, but I've just got a standard AA holder. But at the end of the day, it's a 3.7 or so, um, pretty standard lithium battery. Down here we've got a little combined circuit, really nice pound dot, or under two dollars in America. Um, it takes USB in and it charges a battery, and it has a little buck converter circuit which generates five volt out. And it's just in this case all on board. A couple of amps I'll check out. Uh, fantastic little general purpose board. You can adjust the output voltage from anything from like three or four volts to. 27 volts i think i tested it too in this case it's been used to chuck out just over 5 volts 5.1 volts there right so uh going to the right there we have a little p-channel mosfet uh here we have an ssd1306 display and on the right we have a little nano now you're gonna have to use some imagination here imagine this test lead is three nice buttons i just don't have room for buttons um Imagine that Nano as being some, a little simpler than that. Uh, wouldn't normally have the USB connector. You don't want the USB chip underneath because that uses too much current. And you don't want that light on there because that uses too much current. So you've got a pretty simple low power 328 based um, board. So right now, the board which is controlling that P-channel MOSFET. Now, just to bring you up to speed if you're not... P-channel MOSFETs, modern ones, can switch quite a lot of current. This is way overkill, this one. I'll use a tiny little surface mount one at some point. Um, you know, two amps, an amp is nothing for it. And it pretty much can act as a straightforward switch because it's P-channel. I've got it referenced to the positive line of the buck converter here. In other words, it takes its power from there and it can or not output to the Raspberry Pi. And that's how that works. So, I'm going to show you this from scratch. I'm going to power that thing up. You will see that what will happen is that this display and the board will be showing you the status, the voltage. It will power up. It will realize that the uh, battery is in fact okay and it will power up the Raspberry Pi. And there we go. Starting up, the battery is at 3.8, 3.8, 3.9. It does a running average. And it has now turned on the Raspberry Pi. I don't know if you can see there, 
Red light says the Raspberry Pi powers all right. Green light says it's often booting up Linux and doing all the other things. Now, what you really don't want in these circuits is for something like that to be happening, activity going on and cutting the power. And that's what happens without a proper power supply. And you can not only lose uh, data, you can actually end up with a situation where the, your little SD uh, memory gets damaged. I have done that recently. Is damaged utterly beyond repair and I couldn't reformat it with any of the tools I had had to throw it in the bin so it's absolutely vital um, that shutdown and uh, is done gracefully and what you'll see uh, as I'm demonstrating this Raspberry Pi will be turned on and off a number of times and I won't do it any harm whatsoever so what we have here then this is your running mode uh, I can't really simulate the battery running down but I've, I've got a test button uh, in software to uh, actually do that because because I'm running a, a running average for the battery to get rid of any spikes in the A to D converter reading the battery voltage um, incidentally that's just been done by two simple resistors not even precision resistors and then I compensate for that in, um, in the software so we're on 4.6 volts I can simulate knocking the uh, voltage down to zero but before that let me just show you uh pretending here that i've got real buttons the, the, the set button various things i can set up here i can set the high level the low level and various delays what do i mean by the high and low level all right so high level is 3.8 low level is 3.4 this is very important as the battery goes down with the power off, there'll come a point where you want to turn the circuit off. So at 3 point volt, the lower voltage, you'll turn the circuit off. The instant the Pi is no longer taking current, the battery is going to start recovering. That's what happens. And if you don't have what we call hysteresis, then you're going to turn the power back on, and then you're going to see the battery voltage go down, and you're going to turn the power back off and say, and there are people that I've talked to who have missed this altogether. So a three point volt the battery will turn off. Um, sorry, the uh, circuit will turn off power to the Raspberry Pi. And when I say Raspberry Pi, it could be talking about any single board computer. Um, there's nothing special about the fact that it's a Raspberry Pi. And then the circuit will reduce this display to as little as possible because remember with OLEDs you only use power when you light up a pixel so if you have a lot less display you use a lot less power. Uh, we'll sit and wait for the battery to come back up that could be or will be when you apply power to it and we'll turn everything back on. Right so I'm going to simulate that. Um, the up button here if I hold the up button it will in fact simulate the battery voltage going right down. Now, that won't last past power up. Um, so what will happen is, I'll press that. It will go into warning mode. It will tell the Raspberry Pi that it has to shut down. It'll wait. It'll give it time. And then it'll shut the power down. At which point it'll say, oh, well, actually, the battery's all right. And it'll come back up. So watch carefully. Hold the um, down button. Waiting. And now we're going into timeout. The Raspberry Pi is being, you can see the activity there, told to shut down. After a while it will stop doing anything. It's finished. It's shut down. This will wait several seconds longer to be absolutely sure. And you can program that time. And it turns the Raspberry Pi off. So that's a good clean power off for the Raspberry Pi. Now, as it happens, we're in standby. Oh, the voltage is 4.0. I can turn the Raspberry Pi back on. So no rush. And turns the power on to the Raspberry Pi. Now, because of that hysteresis, there is no chance of it turning on and off and on and off. So the Raspberry Pi, there's no chance it's going to get halfway through its setup and suddenly get kicked out again. Uh, here's the power to the board. Now, apart from the fact the prototype, I could knock something over here. 
um, as you can see turning the uh, power on and off there's no detrimental effect whatsoever actually I may put some indication on there that the power is actually plugged in because right now apart from the battery voltage going up you can't really tell that it's been plugged in if you look at that battery voltage there 4.21 to 2 take the power out starts going back down again four point uh, as I say don't take that value too literally because you can tweak that uh, there was no point in using precision resistors when you simply compensate for it in software and that's about it so uh, what's different to any other power supply well it's dirt cheap you're talking about just over a pound just over a pound nothing for resistors and um, the MOSFET uh, I would say probably the most expensive item on here is uh, the desire the display or the battery. I think the display is about three pounds. So all very cheap. At some point, uh, this will turn into something very pretty. We're working on a variation right now. We have a board layout. We're working on a variation of this with two um, booster circuits. Now, the reason you might want to have two booster circuits is this is all very nice, but when the power is applied, if the battery was really low, the circuit will come on after a while. And this uh, charging circuit has to um, power the battery and power the Raspberry Pi. And it's basically not going to do it. It's um, if the battery was really low, um, and you were using something like a Pi 3, then th there just isn't enough power to go around. Uh, in this case, on the Pi 2, it seems to be easily enough. Um, so what you, there's two ways you can do that. You could have multiple um, charging circuits, or you could or two of these together with diodes and have one of them coming straight from the incoming power. So that, in fact, what would happen is when the power comes on, instead of this circuit here which is running on the battery powering the pi another one would be powering the pi uh you could have used a relay for that i prefer not to use a relay loads of different ways you could do it um and by obviously if you or two of these together with diodes you lose a little bolt of little voltage but of course you can turn this up to 5.6 5.7 um this nano um has a regulator on it it doesn't care if the voltage is a little bit higher and this display is running off the three volt three off the nano so it doesn't care at all so all of that works very nicely as you can see i've been sitting here for the last hour turning on and off trying all sorts of different combinations um still tweaking the software i could make the, the display a hell of a lot prettier i may try and fit that down to a 32 pixel display because uh really we only there's only one extra line there um i could find a way of alternating the displays um but that's pretty much it um that's the end of a very long road of discovering um how to make power supplies and how not to make power supplies and taking out more than one sd in the process anyway there you are hope you enjoyed that read the blog